Sin is capable of spiritual assassination. You know, a lot of people said that it is impossible for a believer that is saved to lose his salvation. I show you a mystery. Sin has the ability to slay your spiritual life. Slay you. Uh, are there many words for death? Death. There are only a few words, few synonyms for death. Huh? The scripture is not. I can show you from other scriptures. Oh, I think I need to show you. You will not believe it. Sin can slay you spiritually. Sin can kill. Suffocate. Take away. I need to show you this scripture, but it's not on my script. Scripture that speaks about the deceitfulness of sin in Hebrews. Is it Hebrews chapter 2? Okay, Hebrews chapter 3. Let us go to verse 12. Hebrews 3, 12. Um, let me show you the ability of sin. Hebrews 3, 12. Quickly. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief with an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. He said, take heed, wait. Take heed, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. Which kind of unbelief is this? He said, in departing from the living God. Such unbelief that will make you depart from the living God. Go on. But exalt one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Now, the deceitfulness of sin will make you hardened and you will depart from God without knowing. Sin can slay you spiritually and you will lose that salvation. The only thing that is not theologically captured in the Bible is how much of sin will make you lose your salvation. It's not captured in the Bible. It means you will use your life as an experiment to tell us that. When you decide to sin away, then we'll look at your life and say, ah, this is how it will happen. But my own life will not be on display for that kind of experiment. The deceitfulness of sin is the, is, is the technology by which Satan hardens people and then makes them depart away from so sin can slay you. Are you with me? Oh, you still don't believe? How many of you have ever read to the book of Revelation? When Jehovah himself, Jesus himself said, he will blot some people's name out of the book of life. It means your salvation is reversible. Even from the, the realm of documentation, your name will be blotted out, documentation. And the kind of blotting that Jesus was talking about, the threat he gave is when he blots it out, there will be no memory that it was there before. Just to show you that you can lose your salvation. And I see how about that scriptures. I have 80 scriptures in the New Testament that says that. Because I've studied that subject extensively. 80 scriptures that says you can lose your salvation. And in fact, you cannot even miss, miss that point if you study your Bible carefully. It was uh, uh, Pete, uh, Paul that says, I beat my body, I put it under subjection, lest when I preach to others, I myself might be a castaway. Be a castaway. Several strange scriptures like that in the New Testament. And, and I don't want that scripture to be describing me. So, oh, you don't know what castaway means. I don't want to be described. Huh? by that scripture ever in my life but there are 80 times where you find those kind of scriptures 80 times in the bible and the some of the ultimate clear ones 
is in the fact that your name can be blotted out of the book of life. And that's, there's no way you can interpret that one. You can't interpret it away. And say it means, no, your name was blotted out of the book of life. That means they, you are no longer according to them that are living by Christ. So sin is the gateway to that kind of spiritual debt. Sin can deceive and sin can what? Slay. All right, let's go to the solution finally. Now, I had to do this teaching to, to bring you to a point of conviction that the, a genuine believer doesn't set out on his Christian journey with, with a heart to try sin somewhere along the line. His tolerance to sin is zero. It is such a determination. You need to, you need to love righteousness and hate wickedness. It's such a determination that you must begin the journey with. And those of us that have survived a few decades in this faith can tell you some experiences. You will go and meet sin in the office. The office that you are working, you meet sin there. You, you see a system of corruption. And the, when you decide to stand out that I'm not part of this, just note, note that your promotions will not come. For five years, my promotions were held. Because we had a position that was contrary to the norm. You will meet sin everywhere. In, everywhere you meet sin. In some places, sin is systemic. It's only designed for unbelievers to thrive. And you are brought into the place. Suddenly, there is a battle. That's when you will know that sin is at the door. But God said... It is our destiny to rule over sin. So if my living right is at the expense of my promotion, keep the promotion. Keep the promotion. If that person that wants to marry you, say he wants to run a test on you before he marries you, keep the marriage. A Christian is a man that survives by his conviction. The depth of your conviction is the proof of the fact that you have met the Lord. And a Christian doesn't gamble with sin. It is the only thing that has the ability to slay him spiritually and take away that precious salvation that he has found. Uh, we need to be determined at all costs to live above this sin. I, I forgot one, one very important matter. Let me introduce it to you quickly. It's in the book of Romans chapter 7 verse 5. Romans chapter 7 verse 5. I need to define something to you. It says, for when we were in the flesh, the emotions of sin which were by the law did walk in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Can you underline motions of sin? Sin has motions. The motions of sin. And I need to show you some of the motions of sin quickly. Romans chapter 6 verse 12. Let me show you one motion of sin. Romans 6 12. He said, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it's lost thereof. First motion of sin is lost. Sin has its lost. And that's what? And sin is trying to compel you to obey it in its lost. Motions. These are the baits, the chains by which sin traps its victims. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 and 4, quickly, the motions of sin. Motions of sin. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 and 4, quickly, quickly. It says, according as his divine power had given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Next verse. Whereby... 
are giving us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. That means if you patronize that loss, it leads you to corruption. The motions of sin. The first is lost, and it is a gateway to corruption. The moment you patronize the lost that sin uses as an advertisement of his products and you actually lay hold on his products and participate in his products what you are doing is that you have opened the door of corruption uh, what's the meaning of corruption yeah, enough. in king james language corruption actually means death You have opened the, the door to spiritual death the day you decide to implement the desire that sin brought. There are people that their spiritual senses were very, very heightened because of the saturation that they sustained for a long time. And then you open the door to sin. And then you just begin to see a gradual process of... According to the Bible, death is not an event. Death is a process then you lose your spiritual senses. You become blind to God. You begin to lose your powers. Lose your cutting edge, your prophetic cutting edge. You begin to lose all those things. Corruption is setting in, downgrading your quality, downgrading your capacity, downgrading your potential. And when the devil has stripped you of all your glory, you become a naked entity. Then he comes and uses you for sport, for circles, for games afflicts you with incurable diseases so that everyone that was a christian in your time will see you and their faith will shake that is this what god does with the christian satan wants to profit from your fall and the day you allow him by patronizing the advertisement of loss that he brings your way then you enter into the economy of corruption things can begin to shut down begins to shut down begins to shut down the emotions of sin the emotions of sin he has motions are you pregnant with a lust that you have carried for 12 years you can abort it right now it's just like when someone is pregnant the the the, the fetus moves there are motions sin has motions lost that lust can be shaken inside and that's why when you lose your virtue of Christianity, of sincerity, you, 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 have, you expose yourself. Because there's no way you can be pregnant and not know. There's no way lost will be locking your heart and you not know. Those are the times where you need to go and lay hold on the horns of the altar. And ask for Jehovah Mekadishka, the one that trades in fire. To purge your vessel. To purge your vessel. For those of us that are traveling ministers, we, we, we encounter many things on the field. You go for a crusade, you preach and minister and cast out devils and then you come home with lust, contaminated. You need to go again and enter into the intensive care unit of the grace of God. People will be saying, he, he's in Makoti, why didn't he, didn't he come to preach? He is, he is, he is polluted. That's why he's sterilizing himself with prayers. If you lose this practice, corruption will eat your spiritual gift. It will eat your eyes in the spirit and make you blind. It will, it will take away your wings. You can no longer mount up. And when you are a being flat on the ground, Satan will come and he will use you for sport. Just like they use Samson as a grinding machine. He wants to gain from you. He wants to use your ridicule to put a feather on his cap. Emotions of sin. Are you here this evening? And laws have been making motions. You've been trying in the flesh to contain it. And you think that your discipline is strong enough to hold you in place. I assure you. It is not the water around the boat that makes it sink. It's the one that enters inside it. If it has entered inside you. You know what? It might take 20 years. But you will sink. 
So when you notice the emotions, you go to Mekadeshka. Mekadeshka. The Lord our sanctifier. The one that is called the purifier of silver. Ha! Behold, I send my message. And he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come into his temple. Even the messenger of his covenant. He shall come, say the Lord. But who shall abide in the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he shall be like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them like gold and silver. So that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Are there emotions inside? Tonight is the night of our bottom. You can kill that lust now. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, have you been seeing an allergy? An allergy has been coming with money. And in the night, you've been seeing this allergy. And you know his mission is not pure. You can kill those motions this night. You are going to strip yourself of your mask. Jacob wore the mask of another man. Appeared in the likeness of another man. You will strip yourself of that mask tonight. Make a disc, the one that trades with fire. He wants you naked. He wants you stripped. He wants your virtue of sincerity to be your driving force as you come for purging. Those motions. Those motions. Some of the motions are two years old. And Satan is seeking opportunity to achieve actualization. Tonight, you want to go before the refiner's fire. And you want to ask the refiner, this lost, can you deal with it? Can you cry to him right now? You take a position that is conducive for you, either sitting or standing. But by all means, draw near the refiner. Draw near the purifier of silver. So that he might purge you. Iramo siko breminati la hazamonde. Sin has motions. It has motions. It has movements. There's an evidence that it is in your heart. We come to our boat. That degenerate seed. That it might be cut off. That it might be removed. Cry. Cry. Cry to him. Pastors are not spared. Bishops are not spared. It's a plague. Sin is at the door. But you shall rule over him. For his desire is unto you. It came for you. It knows your loss. It knows your desires. It knows what you like. It knows what will please your soul. It came custom made. Designed to slay you. To make you a slave, to keep you in captivity through deception. But tonight, we want to escape the corruption. Brabi babon sadi akazezaile. 
Jesus en abrante bakuria babarate in so bela in so manzeli in so kelima kante baboria brakatala asi kobresko vilando gorea have you been seeing an unbeliever opening up your emotions to an unbeliever because of money because of gain when you promise employment what was it that was promised you sin is at the door sin is at the door and his desire is for you Sin is at the door. Kali Bobo Santalia Escoba Barico Semin Anteli Yeto Seco Bande Baboria Antelia Sika Bresco Felato Ecombeleske Tama Kanda Babola Masalia Sin is at the door. Sin is at the door. Sin is at the door. He desires you. He wants to make you a slave. He wants to keep you in captivity. Sin is at the door. But thou must master it. You must rule over it. There is capacity for you to rule over sin. For it is written that sin shall not have dominion over you. Oh, Marceli Mokoria, I want to live holy. I want to live a righteous life. I want to live free of the infirmities of sin, of the wickedness of sin, the corruption that it brings, the corruption that it brings. Yaba baba baba santoria. Yaso kele hira na siko bandeli. Masiko bresu fala mesalia. Can you call him to abort it? To remove the loss? To port you from the loss? Make a discount. The purifier of silver. Come to my aid. Come to my head. Isa Monzeli Mokori Abranteli. Ante Bobori Asiko Brendi. Eli Alalalalalalalabasanti. Risa Sabekaria.